Greetings in the name of Yahweh HaMashiach. At the end of today's broadcast, I'll have a mailing address, phone number, and website. Please stay tuned. Greetings in the name of Yahweh, the only name given among men, whereby we must be saved. And we do appreciate each and every one of you who have taken your time tuning in this program. We have a CD called The Father's Name in Literature that we send out along with it. In this broadcast, we're going to be talking about the Passover, known in Hebrew as the Pasach. Now, we are going to the book of Matthew, 26th chapter of Matthew and the 6th verse. And if this is the first time you've tuned into this program, normally we are talking strictly about the true name, normally. But in these next several broadcasts, ever how long it'll be, we're going to be talking about the Passover. And along with the name. Because you really can't even get into nothing in the Old Testament or the New Testament without dealing with the name. The thing is, is understanding the right name. To really understand the New Testament, you're going to have to understand the Old Testament. We've been talking about this in the last several broadcast so we're going to turn over to the book of Matthew the 26th chapter verse 2 we're going to be reading from a red letter edition King James Bible and studying from it of course there will be probably other versions that we'll use But normally when we study, we use the King James. Then you can branch out to other versions and translations of different things. But your King James Bible is probably one of the best translations if you know how to study with it. So we're going to have to understand the Passover... In the New Testament, you have to understand the Passover in the Old Testament. Because there is so much to this. Matter of fact, give you an example. In the 17th verse of Matthew 26, it talks about the unleavened bread. Now, to understand the unleavened bread, you have to understand the timing of it in the New Testament. Because the timing is what's going to make all the difference in the world to understand when the Messiah would have died. I said to understand when the Messiah, or the Hebrew called Mashiach, would have died. He gave his life. They didn't take his life. He laid it down. But you're going to have to understand from the scripture to understand this. And this is what is so important. Now, Here in Matthew 26.2 says, Ye know that after two days is the feast of Passover. And the Son of Man is betrayed to be 
crucified. Now, we have to understand what date of the month, not the day of the month, but what date of the month is the Passover. The date and the day is two different things. But it's not going to change nothing. But to find out exactly when the Mashiach laid down his life, your Bible will tell you this. If you go to the Scripture and understand what day the Passover starts. What day does the unleavened bread start? Scripturally now. And we'll deal with the unleavened bread, but we need to first talk about the Passover and find out the date of it. So we're going to take this, try to take it verse by verse. We're not going to rush through it. We're going to go through it to understand according to Scripture. Anybody that would teach you a Passover without understanding the, the Old Testament is not going to be teaching it right. This Bible that's laid out, it's laid out for every man, not the interpretation of man to interpret, but to understand what the Scripture says. I said to understand what the Scripture says. That's what's going to make all the difference in the world is understanding what the Scripture says. And how to understand this, you know, there's a verse that Apostle Paul talks about And in what Apostle Paul is talking about, if you study it and understand it, Apostle Paul, along with all of the other, all of the other apostles, they laid out the scriptures. But right here in Peter, before we go over to the scriptures, in Second Peter one twenty says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. What that means is I cannot put my interpretation on it. You cannot put your interpretation on it. The scripture will give its own interpretation. It's of no private interpretation. No prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. When you don't go back to the Scripture, then you'll be given your private interpretation trying to figure out what's going on is what you wind up doing. 
So, I want to make sure that everybody understands where I'm coming from. Because to me, this here is something that's very, very important. And I'm going to tell you why. There's a lot of teachings today that's taking place. There's a lot of paganism that has hit the assembly. The church today is actually has actually built their doctrine on the Nicene Council. The Nicene Council is what the church has actually based. I'm talking I'm not talking about the church that Apostle Peter had the keys of the kingdom to that the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the Scripture. I'm talking about what they built on. Not the doctrines of of man. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about going back. To what the scripture says. I said going back to what the scripture teaches. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about this stuff. Building on a Nicene Council doctrine. That has been taught today and being taught today in the churches. The Nicene Council doctrine has hit the church, and the preachers today have failed for it. I said the preachers today have failed for it. We have got to get back to what the Word says, not what a Nicene Council or a denomination of man says. So remember, we're, not, we're going to get away from the private interpretations of man and let's establish This Passover that we're talking about from the Scripture. And then there could be no argument. If I go to the Scripture and I stay with the Scripture to understand the Scripture in the New Testament, how could you argue with that? You ought to be scared when the man would teach you without Scripture. That's what the majority is doing today. But we're going to pray right now because we're fixing to go over to the book of Exodus in the 12th chapter of the book of Exodus. And Father, we ask you this day by your grace and mercy to help us. Help us understand your word in the New Testament coming from your word, the Old Testament, to establish us to understand the New Testament writing by the Old Testament writing. And we give you all the praise and honor and glory in the Mashiach Yahweh's name. Amen. All right, oh, we go over to the book of Exodus 12 and verse 11. That's Exodus 12, chapter, and the 11th verse. And it reads, I'm reading from the King James then we'll take some of the scriptures 
and go back to the scripture or what is known today, they call it the Kitave HaKodesh, the Holy Scriptures. And we would understand that our King James Bible in the Old Testament is taken from Hebrew. And overall from Genesis to Malachi is known as the Tanakh. All right. So in Exodus 12.11 says, And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. In a hurry. It is, the King James says, Lord's Passover. Now, here in this verse, where you see the word Lord's, L-O-R-D, L-O-R-D, in capital letters, because it has possibly S, and then Passover. But when you see the, the word Lord here in capital letters, in Hebrew, it reads this way. It reads, Pesach, who, le Yahweh. It actually means a Passover. It is the Passover unto Yahweh. Now, this is actually the first place the word Passover, the Hebrew word for Passover is the Hebrew word called Pesach. The word Pesach come from a root word called Pasach. Means to pass over or spring over. Now, to understand this, you would understand why the Passover is what it is. Because what he would do, once he seen that blood, he would of that animal that would be called the Passover sacrifice, it would, the the Spirit of Yahweh would pass over or spring over that house if that blood was on the doorpost. This is really how the word Passover or the Hebrew word called Pesach. That goes to a root word now. That is Pesach, meaning to pass over or spring over. All right, going to the book of Leviticus. Now, this is probably where we're going to deal with this. And we probably will jump around a little bit. But here in the book of Leviticus really gets into the feast days. Really shows the feast days that Israel kept in their time. Now, we have to understand that all these feast days that were set up in the Scripture of the Old Testament were shadows. The Messiah was the very image of those feast days. And you have to... There's a lot of people teaching the feast days certain ways, but I want to stay really mainly with the Scripture on it. I believe the feast days, if you can keep in memory of these and see how they've done, they'll be a real blessing to you. To see how Yahweh dealt with Israel, but these things 
were fulfilled in Mashiach, but to understand them in memorial. They'll be a real blessing to you. And when you see animal sacrifices, that blood of those animals would be sacrificed till the time the Mashiach began to be beaten, but it would take his death, burial, and resurrection to complete everything. But, once he gave up the Spirit, we find that in the temple, the veil was rent from top to bottom in the temple. Now, but to really understand all this is a blessing. So, over in what I was just telling you about here in Leviticus 23, but remember when I just read to you in the book of Exodus 12:11 where it talks about the Lord's Passover. In Hebrew, I was telling you that it's a Hebrew word called Pesach Hu Layawa. The Layawa means unto Yahweh. The Passover in the Scripture, in the Old Testament, was unto Yahweh. Yahweh is the one that was that set it up for Moses to do. He he Yahweh raised Pharaoh up that his name Yahweh would be magnified. According to Exodus, if you go to Exodus nine sixteen for this cause. I have, for this cause have I raised thee up, that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. This is actually quoted in the book of Romans 9.17. Exodus 9.16. You can't even really get started in your Bible without understanding and coming across the name of Yahweh. Period. There's no sense even trying it. You're not going to find a Jesus name, a Yeshua name, having anything to do with any of this. Now, we understand that the word Yeshua and the word Yehoshua are in Hebrew, but they were men's names. But the name of Jesus was never used over there. Only Yahweh's name was used. Not Yeshua, not Yehoshua, but Yahweh's name. So the Passover is unto Yahweh. Of course, your King James is going to translate it a little bit different here than what the scripture actually translates it. If you will examine this, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. Where it talks about Layabu, the word Layabu means unto Yahweh. So now, in Leviticus here, the 23rd chapter, verse 1, it will start dealing with a lot of the feast days. Now, how far we get, I don't know, look like our time's about coming on again. But, it says, 23 and 1 of Leviticus, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, here it is again. Lord, L-O-R-D, spoke, spoke unto Moses. Look it up. Look this same word, L-O-R-D, capital letters up. Go over to Exodus 12 and 11. Look up that L-O-R-D. And you're going to see again two places 
Yahweh is involved in this and his name is involved in it. Why would he just throw his name out? Why has man done it? I'll tell you one of these. Man's done it. Man's done it is because the church today is preaching a Nicene Council doctrine. Not according to Scripture, but a Nicene Council doctrine. We're talking about the Passover. So 23 1 says, and King James says, Lord, but it says, and Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of, of Israel, and say unto them, talking about the children of Israel, concerning the feast of Yahweh. The Hebrew word for feast here is the word called Moadei, Yahweh. The word actually comes from the word Moed. Now you go have you can have the word feast being used different ways in Hebrew. So you have to understand in that particular verse that you're dealing with, which way is it being used? So you keep up with this that the word feast here is be is the word that is the word known as Moede, or Moed, excuse me, comes from, in the written scripture here, the word Moade. The word Moade has a root word again. Moed. It can mean appointment, assembly, or a meeting, or a congregation. A place of an assembly. And this is what is taking place with the feast. Now, we're talking about the Passover in the last broadcast. We had went to the book of Matthew. The 26, 26 and 2. Where it talks about the Passover and the Messiah being crucified and betrayed to be crucified at the feast of Passover. And in that verse, it was talking about two days before the Passover. So when did the Messiah die? To understand all this, you have to go back to Scripture. So we went over to the book of Leviticus 12 and 11, where the first place the word Passover was used. In Exodus 12, 11, it talked about Pasach, who, Le Yahweh. And it means it is a Passover unto Yahweh. In Leviticus 23, 1, reading in the book of Leviticus 23, 1, it says, and the King James is going to say, Lord, but this is where the Hebrew name of Yahweh is written. They've covered it up with the word L-O-R-D in capital letters in places and the word G-O-D in capital letters in places and also the word Jehovah used seven times. So it says, and Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, in verse 2, 23 to Leviticus, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, concerning the feast of the King James the Lord. Again, you have the L-O-R-D, And when you look at the Tanakh from where the King James translated from, it's the Hebrew word Yahweh. So the feast of Yahweh. In Hebrew, where you see the King James will say the feast of the Lord. In Hebrew, 
It's the word called Moadei, Yahweh. The word Moadei comes from a root word called Moad. But the word Moadei, uh, excuse me, Moadei is in the sentence in the Hebrew Scripture. But the root word that's in it, it comes from the word Moed. The word Moed is like appointed or appointments, times, meetings, assemblies as gathering together. So the feast were a time that Israel would gather together unto Yahweh in Jerusalem once they come into their land after the 40 years, after they begin to inherit. So, and Yahweh explains all this. But they were on their way and it took them 40 years to even start to get what belonged to them. Then once they got into the place that they would worship y'all, which was Jerusalem, then everything had to be zeroed in there every year with every feast. All right. So it says, the feast of Yahweh, which ye have proclaimed to be a holy are to be holy convocations. Now, the, of course, the word holy here is the word kodesh. And the word convocation is the word mikra. Or in the scripture, it's the word mikra. The word mikra. It's going how fast you really say it. And it is meaning called or called out. Being summoned out. Like a procla proclamation. And it is a holy calling. Even these are my feast. The word again. Here it uses the word Moadai. It's read, it's read a little bit different than the other one. The vowels change a little bit. So if you hear me say Moadai, then you see me say, or you hear me say Moadai, it's because of the vowels that have changed. But the root word the root word is the word Moed. So when you're looking at the Hebrew scripture from where the King James translated from, the sentence form is going to be different. But when you go back to the root word, it's going to usually take it the same thing. All right. So these are holy convocations. I said these are holy convocations and these are feast under Yahweh. And in verse now he's he he's not just specifically specifically just talking about any kind of feast here now. He's talking about feast that we're gonna be talking about. They were really about three feasts, but there were certain things happened between them. So, these feasts here that he's talking about, he's not specifically named what these feasts are. But these feasts, we have to, if you, they, there's an order for these feasts. And we find. Once you understand this, then you can understand your New Testament. 
But these feasts are set up in orders in certain months, in certain dates of the month. Not certain days, but certain dates of the month. Now they are some that fail on particular days every month. I mean, every time they come around at a particular time. And as we go, we'll be dealing with this. But right now, we're going to understand this and we're going to deal with the Passover. All right? In verse 23 and 6, or excuse me, 23 and 3 says in Leviticus, it says, Six days shall thy work be done. But the seventh day, it's the word called Hashvi'i Shabbat. It's known as the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. In Hebrew, it actually reads Hashvi'i Shabbat Shabbaton. Now, and the King James would read the sab- would read the seventh day, or the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Because to put the seventh day in there, it'd be the Hebrew word called Uvayom Hashavii Shabbat Shabbaton. So, and you have to understand how these are talking about. Now, these this feast here is a feast, but it's a seventh day feast. It's the seventh day. It happens every Every seventh day, you have a Shabbat. This is how Yahweh set it up in the very beginning. So, what we're reading here in Leviticus, he's talking about the feast, but he's not specifically named one until the third verse of Leviticus 23. And the first one he names is the seventh day day known as the Shabbat of rest when you read your King James it says and and it says and and holy convocation there we are again it's the Hebrew word called meek ra kodesh the word meek ra is the word calling summoning uh it's it's calling together. It's a holy calling together that they would meet and worship Yahweh. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Shabbat of Yahweh. Matter of fact, the Hebrew word here in the scripture reads Shabbat he, heave, or heave, according to how you're going to use your, your sixth letter, la Yahweh. So what you have here is the Sabbath is unto Yahweh. And you're back again. These feasts are unto Yahweh. The Passover is unto Yahweh. The Sabbath is unto Yahweh. You can't get you can't get by it. It's impossible to get by what belongs to Yahweh and Yahweh's name being used. It's, just, it's impossible to do it. But when you come to the New Testament. It's nowhere found. Why? It's because of translation. Yahweh hasn't removed his name. Yahweh warned warned people. He warned Israel about this stuff. About taking his name in vain. The taking his name in vain is not using it. It's getting people not to use it when it becomes in vain. Using it's not in vain. 
unless you're going to say something against it. But using it right is not in vain. But not using it is what he warned them about. All right. And it says, Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yah of Yahweh in all your dwellings. All right. Now that all your dwellings is a word called Moshav. All right, but let's go on. Let's deal. We're we're wanting to deal with the Passover. And in the Passover, when you come to the New Testament, this is what I found. When I used to think that I understood the Passover in the New Testament, I would come across certain things that really was confounding to me. Just as dumbfounded I could be. It's because really I didn't have the understanding of the Scripture in the Old Testament. And this is where it's going to really help us all to understand the timing of the Messiah's death. And by doing this, you're going to have to understand the Sabbath and you're going to have to understand the holy convocations because a lot of times people will confuse them and by doing that, they have fell into certain areas that is not scriptural. Is not scriptural. All right, in verse 4. Now, we're fixing to start dealing with the Passover. That's why I wanted to start here in Leviticus. Because really, Leviticus 1, starting from 1, Two and three is telling us about the feast. But now in 23 and 4, he's fixing to tell us about the Passover feast. Now watch what he says. These are the feast of Yahweh. Now watch this here. Again, we're right back to where it's at. It's the word called Moadei Yahweh. It's read a little bit different. King James will say the Feast of Yahweh or the L-O-R-D. But the Hebrew uses the word Moadei Yahweh. The Feast of Yahweh. The Calling of Yahweh. The calling out, the assembling of Yahweh on this feast. Then he said, it is a even a holy convocation. Or holy convocations. Mik Ra'e Kodash. Mik Ra'e Kodash. The word Mik Ra is a calling. It's also a word, a calling out. Where the word moed or moade is like a calling or an assembling really is really what it is. It's an assembling. It's, it's, it's a pointing time. It's getting them together. So he's in these feasts at a pointed time he has the Holy Convocation, Mikra, what you have where it's used here is Mikra A. Mikra A. Kodash. Mikra A is the word a calling. A calling to what? 
a holy calling to what? To these feast. Calling them out. Getting them together. This is what this is talking about. What he's doing, he's laying a plan out. But it's but Israel really not going to be able to really keep these feasts. Really, really keep them for about forty years. Now they do keep some of them during the forty years, but he's laying out something that really once they come into their land, it would be a certain way for them to be kept. All right, so. It says, these are the feast of Yahweh, even the holy convocation, which you shall proclaim. The word for proclaim is the word also is the word tikra'u in the scripture. But when you look at it in the, in the root word, it's the word kara. It's the same identical word for convocation. It means a calling. And ye shall call or be called in their seasons. In other words, when their seasons come around, it's an appointment. It's an a call, it's a calling for them appointments. And understanding that certain feast happens only in certain months. And certain days of the month. To understand this is where you will, you can pin this thing right down to understand when the Mashiach died. 23 and 5. Now, this here is really starts talking about the Passover. It says, 23 and 5 Leviticus is in the 14th day. The 14th day of the first month at evening is Yahweh's Passover. Now, we understand that the, if you go and you start studying on certain times, certain days of the month, there's a certain time you find in the book of Leviticus, uh, excuse me, Exodus now. We might as well stop right here and look at this because in the book of Exodus 13.4, tells you the name of the month which is the first of the month. It's the first month and it's called, in Hebrew, it's called Aviv. Matter of fact, in King James Bible, re spells it A-B-I-B. -I -B. In Hebrew, it is said Aviv. Now, this here is giving us the name of that month. Matter of fact, really, truthfully, the Hebrew has a hay added to it, which would make it be the, or ha'aviv, meaning the month. So, Yahweh has a name for this month. Well, we were just reading in the book of Leviticus. Let me get back over in Leviticus 23 and 5 where it says the 14th day of the first month in Exodus 3, 13, 14 gives you the name of that month. Remember that. Exodus 13, 14 gives you the name of the month 
that the Passover comes in. Remember that. So, if we don't understand it here, we're not going to be able to understand it in the New Testament. Till we understand what is going on in the Old Testament, we're not going to understand what's taking place in the New Testament. And it makes all the difference in the world. Whether you want to believe it or not, it's going to make all the difference in the world. Once you go over and you start really analyzing the New Testament and understanding how the translations were used in the New Testament. Why were they used certain ways? And we're going to be studying out of the King James Bible here. So remember, in the book of Exodus, 13.4 gives you the name of the month that we're talking about here, or what it's talking about here, in Leviticus 23.5, where it says, in the 14th day of the first month, at evening is Yahweh's Passover. Of course, King James is going to use the word again, L-O-R-D, capital letters, for the word Lord here. Of course, it has apostrophe S. In the Hebrew, this word also is the word Pasach Lo Yahweh. You can't get away from it. When you go to the New Testament and you see the word Passover in the New Testament, such as in Matthew 26, 17, you got to understand, or excuse me, in, in Matthew 26 and 2, you see the word Passover. You've got to understand, or the Feast of Passover, you got to understand who established it, and it was Yahweh. This is really what's amazing that people today Once the name of Jesus come in, and they teach you that the name of the Creator of heaven and earth, nobody knows it, nobody can say it, nobody can speak it, and they get people believing it. When Apostle Peter, who had the keys of the kingdom, had the key, and the key was the knowledge of who that rock was, and that rock was Yahweh Mashiach. And he laid the foundation. Apostle Peter, who had the keys of the kingdom. All right. Going back to Leviticus 23, 5. In the 14th day of the first month at evening. Now, your King James Bible uses the word at evening evening is Yahweh's Passover. Now, this word at evening is a total, total, total different word than really what you see in your King James Bible. This word will give you the timing Of the death of the Mashiach. But I'm going to start again in the fifth verse. This is Leviticus 23 5. This is the book of Leviticus 23 5. Now we're talking about the Passover in the new covenant. But we've gone back to the Old Covenant to understand the Passover. It's the only way that you'll understand the Passover at the time that the true Mashiach had gave his life. Right before we 
read in the book of Leviticus. I'm going to read Matthew, the 26th chapter, verse 12 and 13, because of what the Messiah said do. Matthew 26, 12 says, For in that she have poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily, I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. All right, we're going over to the book of Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, the 6th, well, we'll start at the 5th verse, because we were talking about the Passover and the timing. The Passover falls in a certain month, falls on a certain day of that month. Not a particular day, but only a particular month and a particular date. Not a particular day of the week. Oh. Leviticus 23.5 says, In the fourteenth day of the first month at evening is the King James says Lord's Passover. You that are studying along with us and you that just listen to this program, you look up the word L-O-R-D in capital letters here. You're going to find that this is where the name of the Creator of heaven and earth was used. So in other words, every time you see the word Lord in capital letters, God in capital letters, and the word Jehovah used seven times, all they are are cover-ups. Because it's amazing when you go to the New Testament, you don't find the Father's name. And the only way you're going to understand the Son's name is to understand the Father's name. Now, right here in Leviticus 23.5, what we just read, where it talks about the, where it talks about the King James says the Lord's Passover in Hebrew is called Pasach Yahweh, means a Passover unto Yahweh. And we were talking about this in the last broadcast. It says the 14th day of the first month. Now, dealing with the first month here, if you go over to the book of let me see here uh, the book of Leviticus 13 4 you're going to find it reads this day came ye out in the month the Hebrew uses the word ha aviv the word Ha'aviv actually just the root word of it is called Aviv. That's the name of this month, name of the month. In the King James Bible it spells it A B I B. That's in Exodus thirteen four. Now this here is 
the first month of the year. Now, there's a lot of people that teaches that it's only the first month of the year for the feast. But, you know, if you start searching it out, there's not but one month ever been talked about to be the first month. It is this month here known as Aviv or in Exodus 13, 4, and the Hebrew would be the word Haviv, which means the Aviv. So, we know that right here, we have the understanding from the Scripture what is the name of the month that the Messiah died in. See, it's hard to understand. I said it's going to be hard to understand. The New Testament Passover without understanding The timing of it. When it is. This is why people today are celebrating a pagan Easter. You couldn't celebrate a pagan Easter if you really understood the Passover in the Scripture. It would be impossible to do it. It would be totally impossible. Well, let me give you some verses if you're studying along with us. In the book of Leviticus, what we just read, 13.4, talks about the month of Aviv. Of course, it uses the word Ha'aviv. In the book of Exodus, 23, 15 talks about the same month. The King James Bible again is going to spell it A-B-I-B. In the Hebrew, right here in 23, 15, it's also the word Ha'aviv. Also in the book of Exodus, 30. 4, 18. It also talks about the first month being known as the month of Aviv or Ha'aviv. Matter of fact, in Exodus 34, 18 uses the word A-B-I-B twice. This is what's written in the King James Bible. In the book of Deuteronomy 16 and 1 also uses the word A-B-I-B twice in Deuteronomy 16 1 and it's talking about the first month when Israel come out of Egypt. Remember this. When you see the month of Aviv, are you going to say, of course King James is going to spell it A-B-I-B. When you look at this, actually the word itself has a root word called Aviv. It's usually between the timing of March and April. And the reason why you would say March and April is because the Jewish calendar is going to fall within the time frame of this. 
So, it could maybe vary between March and April. But it actually, it means fresh or young barley ears. So, the Creator of heaven and earth brought the children of Israel out in the month of Aviv. And give you an example about something here. If you will go over to the book of Exodus, the ninth chapter and verse 31, you will find the word ear. E-A-R. That's in Exodus 9.31. You'll find the word ear. When you look at the word ear, it's the Hebrew word called ha Viv. And this is where the word the word Haviv or Aviv comes from. Now that's how it's used in Exodus 9.31 because what it's doing, it's showing you something like a fresh, young barley ears. Now, in the book of Leviticus, the second chapter, the second chapter, the 14th verse. Now, you're going to find, again, you're going to find the word where it says ears. Of course, you King James, you're going to see it, and you would read it as green ears. When you do, here's the word again. It's the word aviv. It's showing you Fresh, young, barley ears. In other words, this is how the month got its name. Now, once you begin to look at this and examine it, see, this is why it's so important to take this and understand when the true Messiah gave his life. See, it's easy to just take it and just just preach it or teach it. But this is why people today have fell actually into paganism because of this. Understanding when the Messiah died and the day that he died on and the month that he died on is going to make all the difference in the world. And the timing that he died on. So, the month the date and the time when he died. Now, the month of Aviv, the 14th, can fall on any day of the week. And it's going to rotate each year. It's going to go to a different day. But the month is always going to be in the month of Aviv, or known as Ha'aviv, meaning the uh, Aviv, or the fresh barley, or the green ears, according to how you want to say it. It's showing something, producing something. So remember, 
the 14th day in the first day of the month and the timing of the Messiah is going to make all the difference in the world. And this next, right here, reading again, I'm going to point something else out to you. He's going to give you the timing. When the Messiah died. Exactly when the true Mashiach died. This is why it's so important. Back over in the book of Leviticus 23, 5. Again, it says, in the 14th day of the first month, which is the month of Aviv, or Ha'aviv, at evening. Your King James will use the word at evening. In the Hebrew Scripture, it's going to be a whole lot different. It uses a Hebrew word called Bain Harbayim. The word Bain or the word Bain Bain is the word that means between and the word Harbayim means like evenings. Let's say it this way. Two evenings. Now, once you understand this, then now it's giving you the timing of when the Mashiach died. <clears throat> so, understanding from the Scripture the scripture gives the month, gives the date, and gives the time when it all took place. Let's look at the word Bain Harbayim again. Remember the word Bain is a Hebrew word that means between like being in the middle of something. And the word Harbayim actually comes from a root word that is the word called Ereb, meaning evening. Now when you see the word here in Leviticus 23 and 5, and you see it where it says, at evening. Reading the King James Bible, you would think at evening would be when the day started. And it would be. But the King James Bible uses the word at evening, and by doing that, it's taking you to another, really, an understanding of the Hebrew, Bain Harbayim. Now, if you just take the word evening, let's, let's deal with this for a few minutes. Because there's really hardly no sense getting ahead of ourselves. So, once we do get to the New Testament, we're going to be coming back to all this to prove exactly when the true Mashiach gave his life. Because it was already set up for the month, the date, and the time. Now, take the word evening. The first, when you go to the word evening, you're going to go to the book of Genesis. And in the book of Genesis, 
in verse. All right, in verse. Uh, five. Where it says, I'm reading how the King James says. This is Genesis 1 and 5. It says, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Then the Bible says, And the evening and the morning were the first day. When you look up the word evening here, it actually goes to a Hebrew word that's called Erev. This is what actually starts a day. The morning in Hebrew is a Hebrew word called Boker. Sometimes you may find it as Voker, which is how it's used in the sentence form in the Hebrew. So, the evening and the morning were the first day. I said the evening and the morning were the first day day. And you can find this if you go do any studying, you're going to find this same way with the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, till you come to the seventh day. Once you begin to look this up, examine this, understand this, because again, over in the book of Leviticus, where we're studying from. Where it uses word at evening. It uses, here where we were just studying, where it says in the 14th day of the first month at evening is Yahweh's Passover. Remember, at evening. Now, how are we going to understand this? First of all, once you understand that the word bain means between and the word harbayim meaning evenings, only one day, each day only has one evening. Each day only has one morning. So what you have here if you was to take you a note and you was to write down like the word evening and the word morning and it would be a whole lot easier for you to understand it. If you was to take the word and just say take your and write the word evening or just put an E for evening and then put a M, or you could write morning and put a hyphen between both of them. So you would have an E and then a hyphen and then an M. The E stands for evening and the M stands for morning. So the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning was the second day. And the evening and the morning was the third day and on and on. But when you have Bain Harbayim, that means you're between the evenings. That means you're between the evening of the day that you are in and the evening of that will start the day after it, after it. In other words, just say it this way. This is where the Messiah died at the time at 3 o'clock. So if you was just to say 
The word Bain Harbi Bain Harbiim means three o'clock. That'd be a very simple way to say it. But a lot of people will still hears that, but it's still confusing to them. This is why if you get if you can take your note, write down E, then put your hyphen, and then put your an M. You would have E for evening, M for morning. Then, out to the right of that M, put you another E. Because that E would start a new day, and that morning is going to close out. In other words, really, your day ends in a morning. That's totally against the way we believe it today. But that's the way your Bible sets it up. But we'll deal with this again as we go on. And we do appreciate each and every one of you who has taken your time to into this program. We're talking about the Passover. It is Yahweh's Passover. And Yahweh's alone, the only plan of salvation in His true name. Till the next broadcast, we appreciate you. We love you. Shalom. The mailing address for Yahweh Ministries is 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014, USA. 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014, USA. Phone 770-784-0703. 770-784-0703. Visit the website yahwaministries.org. Y-A-H-W-A-H ministries.org. Y-A-H-W-A-H ministries dot O-R-G Y-A-H-W-A-H ministries dot O-R-G Until next time, we bid you Shalom.